Hello and welcome to the show. I'm David Dickinson and this is The Real Deal. I've got a feeling we're going to have a lot of fun today. <laughs> you know I like this one. <laughs> man, she's a fabulous girl. In the auction, anything can happen. There's quite a few people here like fancy having a bit of a dabble at this. Do be generous with your bids. That was oh, the real deal. <laughs> 180, 190 and 200. Meow. <laughs> First up, let's pop on over to see Stuart Hofgartner. And surely we all know what this is. It looks interesting. I'm looking forward to confirming what I think it is. Looks like a clock, Stuart. We can see it's a clock. It's a clock with a difference. A leather case, what can it be for? I think I know. Ah, but you don't know what Joe wants for it. I'm looking to get £160 for it. And uh, I'm really going to haggle with him. I'm getting married next year, so I really want to up the price. Any idea what it is? What it's used for? It's a watch in another case, so... Yeah, I, it's a clumsy case, but I thought it was from a horse. Yeah. Uh, and I was thinking maybe a police horse or something like that. Uh, I think you're on the right lines. I mean, the fact that it's upside down um, is that if it's mounted onto the side of a saddle, being above it, you would look down and it would be shown at an angle, so you would look at it correctly. It's very much like the First World War cavalry officers' compasses and things like that, the leather work. It's a fairly standard travelling clock of perhaps the First World War, 1900, 1920s maybe. It's Swiss made, always well known for clocks and watches. It's nice quality. Um, it certainly gets strapped in, a little bit of damage on the strapping here, and this would actually unscrew and the bezel would hold the clock onto the case. Um, I've not seen one before. I've seen lots of leather work like this for things to go on horses. It's certainly got a military look about it, and yet there's not a military number or insignia around it. So, interesting thing, though, nevertheless. Uh, and can you tell me how you acquired it? Uh, my father-in-law, he was uh, big in hoarding many different things. He would go to car boot sales and come back with lots of toots, um, right. occasionally a couple of nice pieces. And uh, we were clearing his attic. Take what you need. Um, unfortunately, he's passed over now and uh, getting married next year, and I just want to try and raise a couple of quid for it. Good, good, yeah. I don't think it's going to do an awful lot for you at all as you went, but it all adds up, doesn't it? Absolutely. So, uh, OK. Let's see if we can buy it. Okay, ducks. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Is that just for the case? <laughs> uh, I think you're going to have to try a little bit harder than that. OK. 120, 140 pounds. I think you're warming up. You're getting, Am I really? I think you're getting there. I do like it. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you that to start with. <laughs> well, you haven't seen one before, and it's going to take a little no, bit of research. No, I research. haven't. I shouldn't have said that either, should I? Uh, I'll stick another tenner on. £150 I would like to pay you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, your face to see what your reaction was. Well, interesting. I haven't seen this model before. Now, my experts had 50 to 70 on that. Now, Stuart, he gives the real price. He doesn't faff around. I'll give you £10, I'll give you 50 and I'll give you 20 <laughs> This man always gives a fair price. And I would have no hesitation in saying to you, that is the price. It's a lovely item. It's in good order. He's the right man for it. And I think his offer is exactly where it should be, as always. Well, thank you, David. 150 on the table, then. I don't think I can argue with the governor. It's a deal. It's a deal? Indeed. Thank you. Well, I bought it. You've seen me buy it. We did. A little bit of damage to the strap. I can get that repaired. It's all in my favour at the moment. Joe might be topping that when he gets home. I think my fiance is going to be over the moon with me. I came to get some spare cash for the wedding. I've got a plethora here. I'm delighted. A 
across the den, an area of low pressure is building up over James Late's table. The watercolour that's coming up really is a bit bleak. I look at it and I'm feeling a bit bleak. Happy thoughts, James. Happy thoughts. Somebody in the uplands of Angus will love to have this. There we are. But will I be able to find them? Oh, Andrew, please cheer us up. I really like the picture. I think it's a lovely picture, but I'm looking to sell it today for at least £60. What's the story? Um, it's been in the family about 30, 35 years. Yeah. Um, my dad's side of the family is originally from Scotland. So you have Scottish roots. That's right. And this is a Scottish picture? Yes, it's called the Uplands of Angus. All right, that fits and, in. Yep, and my uncle used to have an antique shop in Yorkshire. Right. So when my dad moved to England, uh, he gave it him as a present, as a little memento of Scotland. Right. To remember. To remind him. Exactly. Of the wet Uplands of Angus. Exactly, yes. <laughs> it looks very bleak, doesn't it? It does, it does. Yeah. yeah. So this artist, David Waterson, and it's dated 1921, I think Waterson lived until about 1954. Yep. Um, and I think he came from Brekin. OK. Maybe Brekin's in Angus. Yeah, I think that's close. So this is a uh, very kind of loose, free watercolour. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of see the storm heading towards you, can't you? That's right. And that sort of rather threatening yellowy cloud, which you often get before a thunderstorm. It's, you could say, slightly depressing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's not everyone's cup of tea, is it? No, it's very bleak colours. Yeah. It does really kind of hark back to the 19th century. OK. Uh, I imagine he was probably trained in the 19th century. But having said all that, it, you know, it's well painted. It's, a, it's an interesting composition. Absolutely no figures, nothing to sort of relieve the, the drabness and dreariness right, yes. of the landscape. I mean, that could possibly be a building there, a boffy or something. Um, so, had you any idea what you want for it? I know what I'd like for it, but I'll, yes, I'll just wait I was waiting to see what the offer would be first, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, um, I'll put some money on the table. Have you got any ideas what you want to do with the money? Uh, it would go towards doing some decorating in the house. Yes, so we might be able to buy you a couple of pots of, pots of paint. Maybe, yeah. It'd be helpful. Um, OK, well, I'd like to offer you 20, 40. Fifty pounds. Fifty pounds. I was hoping for a bit more, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm. I'm. I'm s close to where I want to be with this, but I think maybe we should ask David's opinion. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I don't know what you think, Andrew, but fifty pounds doesn't sound a lot of money for a picture of this size. Watercolors, though, in the sale room. They're not doing that well. This particular artist, we've had a look at him. He's recorded. I think it's a rather nice picture. Now, I've got two estimations on this. I've got a 40 to 60 and I've got a 50 to 80. But I look at that and think it's atmospheric. And when you think if you had a nice country house, you couldn't go far wrong with this. I think James sees potential in this. He's a man of style that has a country house. <laughs> It won't be being sold. It'll be on the stairs somewhere, <laughs> on the stairwell or in the drawing room or who knows how many rooms they have in those country houses. So <laughs> I'm going to say pushing for a little bit more money, okay. uh, but be realistic, because today watercolours, they are difficult to sell. Thank you. Well, I hear what David has to say, and um, as, a, as a gesture, I'll put another £10 down. So that's £60. 60 pounds. Um, and that's really where I see it. Can't possibly put any more down? I think I'm going to stick at that, Andrew. Stick at 60 Yeah. I'll deal for £60. You'll deal for 60 Yeah. OK. Thanks very much for bringing it. Thank you very much, James. Surely that deal's put a smile on James's face. It's going to be a slow seller, a long burner. Oh, well, good job Andrew's happy. I got what I wanted. I'm off to the DIY store to get some paint. I'm going to redecorate my room. After the break, soaring highs. Da, 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 da. <laughs>
da 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 I'm crushing Lowe's. I can see that look in her oh, eyes. Don't do that. That's stuff. That famous dealer <laughs> in Newcastle, that's all she... But nothing keeps the Duke down. She spends more on gin and tonics <laughs> way, eh, man, on a Friday night? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Derby. Our sellers will resort to anything to get what they want for their treasures. They'll use the kids. She's the secret weapon. A bit of flattery. We're going to soften him up. We'll see if we can take as much cash off him as we can. Even some shameless flirting. Jan, you're a good-looking lady and I'm a good-looking pensioner. Hayley and her daughter Lily are taking on Joe Brayshaw. And they have their own strategy. If she doesn't give us what we want, I'm going to please. <laughs> oh, crikey, it's a double hander. I'll... I've got no chance, have I? Not really. What are you looking to make on your moggies, ladies? We're hoping to get a fairly good price for them today, about 20 to 30 pounds for them. And who owns cats? Uh, they're mine, yeah. They're yours. So why have you brought them along today? Trying to raise uh, a bit of money for our first family holiday. And where would you like to go on holiday? Probably, I'm thinking maybe Lanzarote. Lanzarote. So, do you like the cats? I like the little one. I do. I think he, his eyes look really evil. <laughs> they do look a bit, uh, yeah. Yeah. Whereas the taller one is uh, more of a cartoonish style, I'd, yeah. I'd say. They're completely... Yes, they're similar in the fact that they're both a black background, but they're completely different characters, aren't they? Yeah. A bit like cats. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And the tall one is also a vase. It is, yeah. You can stick them in the top of his head. I'm not sure <laughs> quite what flowers you would put in there. No. Have you ever used it as a vase? No. <laughs> no factory marks. Both look like they've come from the same factory because the porcelain is the same, the glaze is the same. This chap looks like he has a firing... Is it a firing mark in his ear? Oh, poor lad. He's like an old tomcat that stayed out too late with a mm. bad ear. <laughs> um, they're probably made down in Staffordshire, aren't they? In, what, 1960s, something like that, I would guess. You like them, Lily? Yeah. Yeah? I'm not a cat person. I am a cat person. Did you buy them new or did you acquire them more recently? Uh, I acquired them from my uh, mother who found them in a Brighton charity shop. And so what did Mum pay for them? Um, not a lot, a couple of quid each, that sort of thing, yeah. So your cats are fab, but I don't think they're worth a great deal of money. But I think they're good fun. I'll... Start with a tenner. <laughs> I think what you should do, Lily, is have a word with the big lad, our boss, Mr D, and get his advice, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, Hayley? Yes. Lily. Lily. Oh, sorry, Lily, I beg your pardon, I do apologise. Now, this is one of my friends, a dealer who is a friend. She's a fabulous girl. Why, hey, she's from up there in Newcastle. And she's, she's embarrassed me today. She's only put £10. I'm, I'm saddened by this. It, it, 20 to £30 is the estimate. And, I mean, there's a young girl here. I can see... I can see... I can see that look in her oh, eyes. don't do that. That's oh, I can no. see that Girls look. Don't, women don't do that. that <laughs> Stand that, proud. That famous dealer <laughs> room in Newcastle, that's all she... She spends more on gin and tonics <laughs> way, eh, man, on a Friday night? <laughs> That kind of puts it into perspective okay, slightly. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you with my friend, <laughs> and hopefully she will see the error of her ways don't be so mean, and she'll put down some more money. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, can't disagree. But I thought I'd give him something to twist about. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. There's £20 for your cats, and there's a tenner to go in the pot for spenders. There is a fair deal. <laughs> 
You know I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh, way, man. She's a fabulous girl. <laughs> so there you go. That's my best offer. Take it or leave it. We got a deal, Lily. Yeah. We got a deal, Mum. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a good holiday. Don't spend it until you go to Lanzarote. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased with what you got for the kitty? Came for this. And Joe gave me an extra tenner. Quite pleased. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> so, plenty of smackers for you. And Joe got one too. Like a kiss off the big man. Off to find a buyer. These boys are going off to auction to see how much they can make. And then I'd like to send it off to the Westgate Ark cat homing place up in Newcastle upon Tyne, which is a remarkable little charity, and I hope they do well with the money. Very generous of you, Joe. Let's fly on over to Jan Keane's table. She's got a World War II fighter plane to contend with. Interesting print here of a hurricane signed by Sir Douglas Bader. But will it go down a storm? We'll just have to wait and see. What are you after, Steve? I would like possibly £50 for it. And your tactics? We're going to tell John today, I'm a poor pensioner, she takes pity on me and um, feels sorry for me and makes me a good offer. Tell me all about this interesting print that you bought in today, which I believe is signed. Yes, it's signed. It's um, Douglas Bader print. And um, it, it was a fine. My mum passed away early this year and she lived with a brother and a brother was in the... Um, RAF in the Second World War. I think he was a mechanic and he was into aeroplanes. And when she passed away, we was emptying a house and found this painting in a, in a bag at the back of a bed. I was amazed. I couldn't believe it. Good luck. She'd been there for years and years. Years and years, probably 20, 25 years as I know to. So do you think your mum knew then that no, it was? No, oh, your mum no, didn't no, know. No, my mum never knew. My mum never knew. Obviously, most people have heard of Douglas Bader. I mean, he was just a hero, wasn't he, in the Second yes, World yes. War? And he was part of the Battle of Britain. Mm. I believe he lost both legs in a sort of flying... About ten years previous to that, wasn't it? In 1931, mm. Mm. which is obviously before the war broke yeah, out in 1939, yeah. and it just seems incredible that you can go through something like that and still want, and to, still fly. want to fly. The risk is life. Yeah, it just seems incredible. I mean, obviously, it's got all these, you know, letters after yes. his name, which obviously they're the highest accolade you mm. can get. And I believe this stands for Distinguished Flying Cross. I believe so. And with it comes this Please. Battle of Britain Museum appeal. Yes. The print has been signed as a limited edition of 1,000 copies by Group Captain Sir mm. Douglas Bader on the occasion of his 70th birthday in 1980, 21st of February. He signed over a print of his own personal aircraft, the Hawker Hurricane, mm -hmm. which clearly this is. And he flew this aircraft whilst commanding 242 Canadian Squadron at Coltishall in late September 1940. And I see, actually, down here, it's number 357, number yes, 1,000. Yes, 1,000, yeah. And um, if you do sell it to me today, what would you be doing with the money? Put it towards holiday. Right. Yeah. Keep my wife happy. Uh, that's the main <laughs> not as, thing. Not as that doesn't take much doing, but... No. Oh, you know. That's <laughs> nice. So, money on the table, Steve. Mm. What do you think I ought to be putting down for it? As much as you can. And then we'll see. <laughs> 20 pounds? <coughs> nah. Nah. Should be flying more than that. A lot more than that. Oh, a lot more. Mm. Right. So, sounds like if I put £30 down, I'm miles away. And yes. not that I want to disrespect the memory oh, no. of Douglas Bader, by oh, the way. We're talking about an iconic war hero here. DFC Ambar won it twice. This is an extraordinary man. The estimate, I have to tell you, I'm ashamed to say, my illustrious advisors say 30 to 40 quid. Absolute rubbish. 30 to 40 quid, absolute rubbish. 
the man's signature has got to be worth 60, 70 quid. I agree. A limited edition, it's got to be £100. Who wouldn't be proud to pay £100 and to have this on their wall? Iconic status. More money down or off to auction? So, Steve, ball in your court. Um, you call the shots. I'd have to go to auction, then. I had a feeling you were going to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But you'll have a nice day out yes, with David. Nice, yeah, yeah. All the best yes. and good luck to you. Okay, Thank you so day. much. Okay. Jan, I think your offer was rubbish, and I think you'll be disappointed when you do find out what it goes for at auction. Well, sorry, Steve, that I couldn't do any better, but I really do hope that it flies for you at auction. At £65.71. It's time for that Hurricane print to go under the hammer. And today's auctioneer Annabelle Brammer has revved up the sale room. And Steve's still confident. I don't think it'll be difficult to beat John's offer. And um, hopefully it'll be the real deal today. So, you sat down with Jan Keen on the day. Yes. Jan said, not really my thing, I'll give you 30 quid. Mm. You turned that down. I thought it was a very low offer, and um, obviously it was taken to auction. OK. Right, now, the estimate is only 30 to 40. It's reserved at 30. That signature has got to be worth more than 30 yeah. quid. One would think, but I don't know what people here in the sale room will think today. Lots of people here. OK, it's take-off. Chuck's away. Let's see where we're going with this one. <laughs> 45 is the Keith Broomfield, after it's a hurricane, um, signed by Douglas Varder. And £20 is on my commission, so 20. Just opened five, up at 20. 30, 5, 40, 5, 50. There's a few bidders here. There's one or two strong bidders here in the room. At £60, centre of the room. Five where? 65 online. I Seven thought it eight. was that kind of money. Boy, no, at £65. Online it is. At £65 and 70, is it? It's at 65. OK, it's gone down at £65. First of all, you've got a commission. Are you happy with yes, that? Yes, I'm very happy with that, okay. yes. Take it away. You're going home with £53. Yes. Pounds. Yeah, now, what are you going to do with the money? Well, we're going to put it towards a holiday. OK, so yeah. it's going to go towards a holiday. So, on the day, £65. That was <laughs> the real deal. <laughs> and, and our man Stephen here is going home with £53. Chocks away. Yeah. Good stuff. Wilco! <laughs> Over and out. Well, I'm really pleased that that's flown off. I'm really delighted. Double Jan's offer and it ended up the real deal. Coming up... If you go down to the den today... ..you're in for a big surprise. Now, what's a big lad like you doing with your teddy? And it's no picnic for Joe, either. So, Sarah. So, Joe. Are you taking my money? Have you ever fancied coming on Dickinson's Real Deal? It is so, so simple. Log on to itv.com forward slash TV. Look for Dickinson's Real Deal. Find out when we're in your area and then you just turn up on the day. It's as simple as that, and I will look forward to meeting you. Here in Derby, our sellers find hidden gems in all sorts of strange places. I found it in the, in the shed. We found this painting in a bag at the back of a bed. Hello. And our next seller, Jamie, is no exception. I rescued this bear four years ago from the bin, and I'm looking for £40. Well, you're with Mr Late. What do you think of that? I do think James can be a little bit tight, but uh, I'm prepared to challenge him for that money. Who's going to get stuffed over this bear? Me or the owner? <laughs> Play nicely, boys. So, what's the story? Uh, about four years ago, uh, my friend was moving out, and he found him in the attic, uh, and he was just going to throw him in the bin. Ah. So I felt so sorry you, for the little you bit. You rescued him? And I rescued him out of the bin. Oh, right. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me it's your grandmother's and you play with it as a child and... No, no. no, no. But somebody has. Yes. I mean, it's been very well loved, hasn't it? It has, yes. I mean, I think he's probably 1930s. Um, 
and he's got a nice plush coat. He's not in the best of conditions, but then I never expect teddy bears to be, because, you know, by their very nature, they were played with and chewed and all the rest of it. So it's probably seen better days. But I think it's very nice. When you acquired him, did you think there might be some value? Yes, I thought so, yes. Yeah. What did you think he was worth? Or maybe you're not going to tell me. I don't really <laughs> want to tell you. Let's see what you, see what you come out with first. Yeah. I think the teddy bear market is not as strong as it was. And, of course, the big money always goes for the stife. So you'd expect to find a little stife button in the ear. There's nothing like that here. So it's almost certainly, I would think, by someone like Mary Thought, who were operating in the 30s and 40s. Right. Um, I think he's definitely a British bear. But he cost you nothing. Is that right? Yeah. So, and so whatever you get is all profit. Yeah. So I hope you're going to allow me a little profit as well. We'll see. We'll see. Shall we put some money on the table? OK. Um, I'd like to offer you 20. Thirty pounds. I was looking for a little bit more. A little bit more. I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, I'm going to put another ten down, so that's 40. A little bit more. Shall we ask David what he thinks? Yeah, I think we he's should. A, he's a bear expert. Now, what's a big lad like you doing with your teddy? Or is he your teddy? I found him, so I felt sorry for him. OK. So I thought I'd rescue him. He is a nice thing. I suppose he's English, pre-war, 1930s. That's Mary thought something like that. Probably. 30 to 40 is the area of expectation from our specialists. I think 40 is a fair offer. I think James has taken a liking to this, so it's a nice one. <laughs> sweet. You see a lot of teddy bears, sweet. and teddy bears are special. This one has a little magic about it. It's got something, and I think the offer is fair. So, uh, have, we, have we got a deal? Yes, I think we have. We have. Let's yes. shake on it. Thanks very much for bringing it along. What are you going to do with your 40 quid now? Uh, I think I'm going to go to a car boot and look for some more items. I think that's a very good idea. So we'll see you next time on The Real Deal. Thank you. <laughs> James wasn't as tight as I thought. I got exactly what I wanted. Jamie thought I was tight? He's got the wrong impression about me. Thank you, James. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Pleased to meet you. Jo's dug up some little beauties on her table. Some little dinky gold brooches. Let's have a go and see if we can buy them. I've seen Jo before and I think she's quite fair and I know she likes gold, so I'm looking for at least £30. How do you come to own them? Um, it was from my late aunt, but obviously I don't wear gold jewellery, so... Well, not old gold like that, so... They're not the most popular items in the world at the moment, unfortunately. Little gold brooches used to be, but for some reason they've kind of fallen out of favour, which is a bit of a shame, and you've got a little stick pin. Yeah. They're very similar, they're both a kind of knot pattern. This one um, has a nice little seed pearl in the centre, and this one has a little ball pattern which sort of mimics the seed pearl. They're in very good order. The brooches have both got a nice little safety chain, which is always nice to have. And they've all got stamps somewhere on them. This one's got a little stamp there. And they're all nine carat. They're Victorian, I would say, Edwardian Victorian, about that age. And did Aunt used to wear these? Not really. She did used to like her jewellery, but um, she, she used to wear more costume and keep those, I suppose, for best, really. So you're hoping to get a bit of money for them, honey. I am. I've heard that you're a bit of a fan of the programme, is that right? Um, I do like to watch a bit of Dickinson's Real Deal, yeah. And is that what's made you come along today? And I know you like your jewellery, so... <laughs> right. Unfortunately, they're out of fashion and I think it's sad, but there's nothing to do about it. £20. £30. £35. Can we go any higher? I don't know. £40. 
40 pounds. If I take those two away, my offer, Sarah, is 40 pounds. Um, and here's David to give you some advice. Well, I don't know what how that sounds to you, Sarah, but um, it doesn't sound a lot of money when you look at two small pieces of jewellery, but they are brooches which aren't the easiest things to sell. And one is a stick pin for a tie or cravat, which is not as fashionable today because it makes a hole in your suit or your tie and so forth. So my independent value, as I've said, 30 to 40 pounds, and it doesn't seem a lot of money, but that is about where the price is. So, Sarah, so, Joe, what do you reckon? Um, what do we do? Just shake hands, then? Are you, are you taking my money? I think I'll have to take your money. Shake my hand, then. Thank you very much. It's been nice meeting you. Will you cash these in pronto, Joe? They'll go, they're the sort of little thing. They don't sell immediately, but they always go. Check you out. You're sounding pretty sure of yourself. That's cos I is very confident. We'll catch up with you later. How's our Sarah feeling? I have to go like that. <laughs> Get those readies in your hand first, lass. I'm happy. I got 40. I only wanted 30, so I think I got the real deal. You certainly did. Still to come, will these black cats be lucky for Joe? These boys are going off to auction. These are to be sold for charity, so do be generous with your bids. Meow. <laughs> A rare book charms Stuart. Rolls Royce magic, Merlin Engines magic, you know, uh, I love it. You are very, very lucky. But will the spell be broken? The other 20. No, no. Never <laughs> over-egg it, mate. That's what happens. <laughs> the other dealer would say, I'm taking the money away now. Oh, there you are. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Earlier in the show, Joe bought these two from this duo. I came for this. And Joe gave me an extra 10. She decided to auction off her new feline friends for a charity close to her heart. There's no money at all. And auctioneer Annabelle's got news to get us grinning from ear to ear. Because they're being sold for a local cat charity, there will, of course, be no commission on that hammer price. They're here to be sold. There is no reserve whether she uh, makes money or not. It's still all going to a charity. It's the Westgate Art Kitten. Uh, and homing centre, and it's based in the west end of Newcastle. Why, I man up there, where Joe comes from. So let's see what happens. They're coming up now. Lot number 15. It's the 1970s stylized black cat and another. And these are to be sold for charity, so do be generous with your bids. And £10 for it. Ten, Straight in at 10. 15, 15, 15, and 20. 20 for you. Five, anyone else? At £20. At £20 it is. All done then at 20 Meow. <laughs> the gavel has gone down at £20, but there are no deductions. So the whole £20 will be sent off to this charity. Thank you very much indeed for your generosity. And that, goes without saying, is the real deal. Well, the old Westgate Act's going to be happy with that lot, aren't they? You betcha. If you at home would like to be the cat that got the cream on this show... What? Well, hey. <laughs> I'm the queen of the dealers. Yes, yes, yes. But there's one man our dealers all want to do business with. What have you heard about Stuart? I think he's very generous. This man always gives a fair price. And I think I put £100 down. We was only looking for 20 And our next seller, John, has got wind of his reputation. I'm meeting Stuart today. He's a bit of a softy, and uh, so I'm going to try and drive a hard bargain and get what I want for it today. So how much? I'm looking for around £100. Feeling generous, Stuart? I don't normally buy books. Let's hope it's uh, of interest. Mm. Yours? Belonged to my uh, late father, yes. So this is a, a handbook for 
Rolls-Royce Merlin Aero engines, basically, 1938. Yeah, a maintenance book. Um, was he into...? He was a design engineer at Rolls-Royce for many years. Was he? Anything in there that he contributed to in the design? I don't really know, actually, the history of it. I know it belonged to my father, but... I don't know where he got it from or his involvement with it at all. And I was clearing out the block case the other week and I thought, it's time to get rid. Yeah, good subject though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah uh, just lift it down here. Uh, interesting um, part of history. Yeah, so 1938 is beginning of the Second World War. Merlin engines were used in... Spitfire, Spitfire. Hurricane, yeah. Several different planes. The Lancaster, Lancaster was a plane that uh, Wallace uh, used to, when he designed the bouncing bomb. And then the front page is always a good one to look at. It gives you all the details here. 1938, Series 2 engines. And I've got to show you this. You've seen it already, I'm sure. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful exploded. Isn't yeah. it clean, yeah. though? Isn't it clean? Yeah. The fact that you've kept it in your bookcase and your children haven't played with it and yeah. all sorts of things made a lot of difference. Um, <clears throat> You've got something you're going to tell us about it as well? Well, actually, when I was looking at it the other day to bring here, I opened it up and I found a, a picture I'd never seen before of my father when he was 16 years old in 1936. Excellent, yeah. Great Orm, where, wherever that might be. So that's yours. That's I'm sure you want to keep that well, one. I'll get that framed, yeah. Yeah, it's very good. OK, um, good part of social history, excellent condition, a uh, good subject, Rolls-Royce magic. Uh, Spitfire's magic, Merlin engine's magic, you know, uh, I love it. Um, I want to buy it. I know I shouldn't be so excited about it, but... I'm glad it, you are. It, it is so clean that it's good. I'm always reaching for the, the mint condition, the mm -hmm. pristine condition of very unusual items. I don't truly know what it's worth, but I'm going to try and buy it, and it's up to us to see if we can okay. uh, come to some agreement over it. 20, 40... 60, 80, 100. and twenty, hundred and forty, hundred and sixty, hundred and eighty, two hundred pounds. There you go. Well, all I can say is this. On this particular day, you are very, very lucky. Because on the show, on this particular day, we have <laughs> the man, the man who buys things that are quirky, that are technical, that are interesting, that are unusual, that are rare, and he gives the most tremendous prices. Now, I've got people back here which I'm relying on to give me some input people that work for sale rooms and have a great deal of experience, I'm getting 50 to 80 from them for, for this <laughs> book. Now, I know this is a wonderful reference book, but it's going to a wonderful dealer who understands it, who sees the value in it. I can't say any more. Get that money off the table, go home and say, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Can you put another 40 down there? <laughs> no. Hey? No, 200 pounds, that's good. Another, another 20? No, no. That's, that's, right, super, that's a super yeah, bid. That's a good, thank you very much. Okay, well done. Thank you, thank you John. Thank you. Something to learn on this show. <laughs> Never over-egg it, mate. That's what happens. The other dealer would say, I'm taking the money away now. Okay. <laughs> it's over 100 pounds. More than I thought I was going to get. Uh, Is that so? Yeah, yeah well, so. That's, that's your game. Yeah, but you stuff. can't take it back now. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a pleasure doing business with Stuart. I got a lot more than I expected today, so I'm really happy. I think I paid the money for it. Never. You could say I've gone overboard on that one. <laughs> and that's why we love you, you big softy. So, were our other dealers more hard-nosed than the Hoff? And did they cash in on their purchases? What can I say? The Douglas Barder print flew off to auction. Oh. So, Jan came away with nothing. Shucks. James started out by raining on our parade. It's going to be a slow seller. But every cloud has a silver lining. 
Unbelievable. I sold that watercolour for a really good profit. He was also a bit grisly about how much he would make on that bear. I think there's a little profit, maybe. He needn't have worried. A buyer stuffed his wallet with cash. Teddy's may be a very handsome profit. So, not a bad day, Mr Grumpy. <laughs> Stuart was the opposite. He couldn't stop himself paying over the odds. But did it work out? Well, he packed that travel clock off the minute he got home. I allowed the customer to buy it. And he also made a first-rate offer for that Rolls-Royce engineer's manual. He gives the most tremendous prices. He might not have sold it, but he has swatted up on Merlin engines. So, if your Spitfire needs a service... You can ring me at the office. Well, we expected generous offers from Stuart, but who'd have thought Joe would pay top whack? Are you taking my money? I think I'll have to take your money. Don't pat her on the back just yet. There was plenty in it for her. Got a made a profit. But those cats and Lily touched her heart and loosened her purse strings. There is a fair deal. You know I like little horses. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, she sent the cats off to the sale room and gave the cash to charity, which paid to treat Matilda's poorly eye. And now she can see properly again. Oh, Joe, you big pussycat. Meow. <laughs> Well, I've really enjoyed today, and I hope you at home have enjoyed yourself. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. I'll see you. Hey, and don't be late.